What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we'll be taking a look at the brand new Marvel Legends movie Ant-Man from the Cold Obsidian Build-A-Figure Wave. Now, when this figure was first announced, I wasn't really excited about it. But once I saw it in person, I was sold on it. So I picked it up and I'm kind of excited to talk about it. So let's get into it as usual, starting with the packaging. You got the typical Marvel Legends packaging and it looks nice. You can see the figure. I really like the way that they posed him in here, kind of holding his helmet. You can see the Build-A-Figure weight or the Build-A-Figure piece. And you could also see down here that it says Ant-Man and the Wasp. So that's pretty cool. And then on the side, you get some Ant-Man artwork that looks nice. And then on the back, you get a look at the other figures in the wave. And then you also get a look at the Builder figure, which is Cole Obsidian, of course. And he looks awesome. Can't wait to put them together. Right now, I only have Thor and Ant-Man, so I got to pick up the rest. Really looking forward to picking up Black Knight. We'll see when I'm able to track him down. But anyways, that's that for the packaging. It's collector-friendly, all that cool stuff. Now let's get into the figure itself. And here he is right out of the packaging, and for the most part, he's a pretty comfortable figure to mess around with. None of the joints are too tight or loose or awkward or anything, so I am happy about that. So let's get into it here. His head is able to move side to side. It's not really able to tilt too much because it kind of sits low, but he does look all the way up. And then he could look all the way down, but if you, if you push his head forward too much, his head's going to pop off. But it does look down and up a pretty good amount. And then for his torso, his torso is a little limited. It pretty much only crunches forward to about there. That does kind of suck. I wish there was a little bit more movement there. But it does go back to about there. So that's pretty good. And then you have the waist swivel. And then you have the ball jointed shoulders as usual. They go all the way around. They come out to the side. And you have the upper bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows. A swivel at the wrist. And a hinge at the wrist. And then for his legs, you could almost get him to do the splits, but not quite. Pretty much only goes out to right there. Let's see if I can get it to go a little bit more. Now that's about it. And then they could kick forward a pretty nice amount. Check that out. They kick forward to about there. And then you could bring them back only to about there. Then they get stopped. And then you have the upper upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees. You have the rocking ankles. And they could also tilt forward and tilt up. But there is no swivel at the ankle or lower leg. That does kind of suck. I do wish that there was a swivel at the at the ankle there. But there isn't. But yeah, for the most part, the articulation is pretty nice on this guy. Uh, I didn't realize how limited the torso was. That really sucks. But hopefully, maybe I can modify it and get a little bit more movement out of there. We'll see. But yeah, for the most part, the articulation is pretty decent. And he doesn't come with too many accessories, but he does come with two different heads. He has the regular masked head. And then he has the unmasked Scott Lang, a.k.a. Paul Rudd head. And then he comes with Cole Obsidian's left leg. And every time I see a, a piece of this figure, I'm impressed. This thing looks awesome. I, I really cannot wait to build this guy. Even though there wasn't much to him in the movie, he was still a pretty cool, like, hulking figure. And it'll be nice to have, like, a big guy like that to have the other MCU figures team up against. But, yeah, they, they really look like they did a good job on this. And now for some quick size comparisons. Here he is next to the Marvel Legends Invincible Iron Man and Marvel Legends Deadpool from the Sasquatch Build-A-Figure Wave. And in case you're curious, he has the harness on from the 2-pack Deadpool from the Toys R Us exclusive 2-pack from a couple years ago. And I think he looks cool like that. It reminds me of the Cable and Deadpool book. So that's that. But anyway, let's get into some more size comparisons. And here he is next to the Marvel Legends Infinity War Wave Captain America and the Cole Obsidian build a figure wave Thor. And then now here we have the movie Hawkeye and the movie Black Panther from the Okoye build a figure wave. And here he is next to the DC Icons Flash and the Marvel Legends Eric O'Grady Ant Man. And here he is alongside some other Ant-Man movie figures. And here on the left, we have the Marvel Legends version that came out with the first movie. And then we have the figure arts version that came out with Civil War. And then just in case anyone's curious, this is just a Vinylmation figure from uh, Disneyland. You can buy them at like Disneyland parks or Disney stores or whatever. And they're just little stylized uh, vinyl figures in the shape of Mickey. But they have all kinds of different ones. But the Marvel ones are really nice. I'm not really into blind bags or anything, but that's what this is. And uh, they're always fun to pick up. But anyways, let's get into the cool figures here. So out of the three, the figure arts is still by far my favorite. I can't wait until we get the updated version of this with the brighter colors and it's more based on the, the new movie. And it looks great, but I love this one. This is one of my favorite figures in my collection. And with these two, I'd say that the new one is by far superior. This one was okay when it first came out, but right off the jump, it was kind of weird because it was really inaccurate. It seemed like it was based on some like early maybe concept art or something because as you could see, the face is uh, totally wrong. But other than that, it does look cool. It kind of just looks like maybe like a what if kind of comic book Ant-Man because it does have a the face that, that resembles the, the comic book look with, with the exposed mouth. 
But uh, yeah, this new one is awesome compared to this other these other two. I, I definitely he's not as good as the figure arts one, obviously, but you know he, he's he's really cool. And the figure arts one did not come with the extra head, so that's one thing it has over it. And uh, this other one, you know, he's fine, but he's nowhere near the quality of this one. This one just has all kinds of nice texturing and a lot of good sculpted details. And again, it had the extra head. Uh, this one did come with like a little Ant Man and like an ant, and I think it even came with like a miniature yellow jacket, but. The new one didn't come with any of that, but I guess you kind of don't need it if you already have the first one. And just in case anyone's curious, you can pop the head off, but the head doesn't really pop onto the ball there. But he does kind of look cool if you want to like modify that to sit on onto that old body. And you can pop the figure arts head off too if you like, but you got to be a little bit more careful there. But the ball, the ball joint here is way too small, so no way is this head going to fit on here, but you can just kind of sit it there. But even then, it just doesn't look right. It's too big. But it would be really cool if the new figure arts one came with the with the new head. But I, I doubt it. I don't know. We'll see. It kind of seems like they kind of uh, get cheap with the accessories with some Marvel figures. But we'll see. Now, the details on this figure are really, really nice. Check out all the texture on the costume. I think that really looks good. Only thing with mine, there's a couple paint flaws. You can see here on the shoulder, it's kind of messed up. And then on the back, it really isn't as clean as it should be. But I could probably touch that up. It's not a not a huge deal. I'm not terribly upset about it. But yeah, I love all the detailing on here. They really went crazy with the sculpt and stuff on here on the chest. And actually, just on the whole body, there's detailing everywhere. It reminds me of the Black Panther from the Civil War wave, how much detail that one had. This one's right up there with it. And yeah, it all looks pretty good. There isn't, I do have a couple paint flaws on mine actually. You can see on the gauntlet, like right here in the crease, it's not painted all the way. Same kind of thing over here. But again, not, not really huge, huge problems there. But yeah, everything looks pretty good. I don't really have any huge complaints. The only thing I'd say I wish was a little bit better is the head sculpt. And not really the sculpt, but the paint. I do wish that it had like more of a metallic finish. It, you know, it's supposed to be metal and it straight up just looks like plastic. They tried to do their little swirly metallic thing. It really didn't work too good. It just comes off as plastic. But uh, maybe that could be painted too and it would look really good. But just as is, it could have been a little bit better. The sculpt is definitely there. I do wish we could see his eyes, but we can't. They just have it solid red. And it doesn't look bad at all, but it would have been cool to be able to see his eyes. So yeah, for the most part, I, I do like the sculpt and, and the details on him. And the thing that really sold me on this figure is this face sculpt. In my opinion, it's amazing. It's one of the best attempts of that 3D printing stuff. Sometimes that technology doesn't work too good and sometimes it looks really great. Right here, I think it looks really great. I can't see why people would be complaining about it. I do kind of understand how someone wouldn't like the smirk, but to me, I mean, it's accurate. It's a, it's a face that the actor constantly makes and it works for the character too. So I'm not sure what's not to like about it. But yeah, it trips me out that people aren't into this this face sculpt. I know there was some early pictures of the of the figure floating around that didn't look very flattering. But, you know, since it started to kind of hit stores and everything, I think more people have uh, started to like it because they could see it themselves and things like that. And pictures definitely don't do it justice. In hand, it looks amazing. And uh, yeah, check out all the details. You got like a little 5 o'clock shadow going on. The hair looks nice. The eyes look, the eyes look really dope too. But yeah, that, that, that is awesome. I, I love that a lot, so... I, I strongly disagree with people saying that this is bad. In my opinion, this might be one of the best MCU head sculpts we've seen from Marvel Legends. So overall, I really do like this figure. I think they did a really nice job on him. I'm not going to say that I love it, but I do love some things about it. And that's the unmasked head sculpt because we don't have an unmasked Scott Lang head uh, with any 6 inch figure. So I'm very happy that we finally have that. And if you're a person that likes to mix up your lines, I definitely say wait for the figure arts version that's coming out later this year. Or buy the one that came out with Civil War wave because like I said that's a really good figure it's one of my favorites but if you only stick to Marvel Legends and you need an upgrade from the original one then this one's awesome because it's a huge upgrade they did a lot a lot of things better with it it's more accurate to the movie like like I said the other one looked like it was based on like some uh, concept art or something possibly it looked it, it pretty much looked nothing like he did in the movie so this one's a lot more accurate he's a really good figure he has some pretty decent articulation I do wish it was a little bit better but it's not really a deal breaker the other thing I do kind of wish was better was the the masked head i wish that it had a more metallic finish to it 
But again, not really a deal breaker. But uh, yeah, I'd say, I mean, this figure is definitely worth picking up, I'd say, you know, I, I mean, it, especially if you could just buy it at retail. If you buy it for 20 bucks, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be happy with it. They did a really good job with it all the way. But for me, it's just kind of tough because I like the figure arts one so much. And I, I almost thought that I'd like this one better, you know, once I saw it before before I opened it. And once I opened it, I was like, oh, okay, now he's cool, but he, he doesn't touch the figure arts one. But I thought, you know, it was going to be one of those things where, uh, you know, it was an upset and the Legends one was better than the figure arts one but nope not the case but still a really good figure and uh, i do suggest picking it up if you need an ant-man for your marvel legends setup but i think that's it thank you very much for watching please be sure to like comment subscribe and all that cool stuff and thank you very much peace